This is Dr. Marilyn MacArthur, um, and she's an anthropologist and, and works a lot with local history. And I'm Reba Jean Shaw Pichette, and I do a lot of local history interpretation. So anyway, um, I wanted to kick it off with handing you a trifold, um, which has images of Mount Sugarloaf throughout history. Thank you. So some some really fun images that you want to share. And so if you're looking at the trifold, you'll see that we have the painting of Sugarloaf that's done in 1855. But under that, we have one that's done in 1835. So that you can see that the mountain has changed over history. So in 1835, people looking at Mount Sugarloaf are not seeing the same mountain we are. Just as after the glacier age, the native people who called the mountain Weequamps were seeing something different. And you can see that snout, that nose, and face on what they were thinking of the mountain being a great beaver uh, sitting in a lake because uh, after the, the end of the glacial age, as, it, as the, the glaciers are, are melting and receding, there was a lake, and so Mount Sugarloaf looked like a giant beaver. But it doesn't so much to us today because it lost that nose that um, Aura right had painted. Yes, yes. The other images that we put up here with a little bit of background for you in the trifold is Table Rock, which um, I don't know, do people, can people still walk out onto that? They do, but they're fenced off. It is fenced off. You're not supposed to, right. And so um, Table Rock, which of course was, was a major outlook um, that really was erected as part of the um, uh, tourism for Mount Sugarloaf when the hotel um, had been at the top. And the hotel is the next image that you see, um, the Summit House Hotel. Everyone, when you hear Summit House, thinks of Mount Tom or Mount Holyoke or something. Many people don't realize that Sugarloaf had a hotel on it as well. And so um, uh, it's, it had been built in 1864, and it's around the same time that Table Rock Formation was put out. Um, there were lots of formations added to the mountain as outlooks for people. And they would walk, walk the trails and they could step out and see, see the views. Uh, so there's a little bit of a history there in the trifold about Summit House and a little bit about Table Rock. And then the images on the back, my particular favorite, because I love trolleys. <laughs> um, is the trolley which used to deliver people to come to Sugarloaf. And it stopped right at the base of Sugarloaf and it went as far as Northampton. It was part of the Northampton Street Railway and it included Turner's. <laughs> and so there's an image of that. Um, I don't think any of us here would remember a trolley. Does anyone remember? What? You do? Oh, yes. We're going to want to Oh, you didn't remember. It was on tracks. Oh, yeah. Okay. Remember when you scoped it between Turner Smalls and Greenfield. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, this is oh, going to be great. Never saw the and trolley so, um, yeah. and the uh, next image, well, you see a view from the top. Then you see an antique postcard showing South Sugarloaf, or King Philip's seat, um, as it was called in postcards. Again, kind of encouraging people to come for the tourism uh, to the valley. And then a, a wonderful um, view looking down back onto the picnic grounds. Most views that people take are always looking out toward the river and toward Sunderland. And it was nice to find this view looking back onto the picnic grounds. And you can see uh, the village um, beyond that. So all of those would be, if you're going on the, the walk, you'd probably like to bring this with you um, to share what you see and the differences. Um, but our main reason for being here today is for gathering stories, for oral history, sharing memories of the mountain and um, sharing your own. And they might be your own memories, but they might be stories that you heard from your parents. Um, or 
your aunt or, or some crazy guy in the local store <laughs> that told you a story about Mount Sugarloaf. We, we want to hear those as well. And to, to kind of start that, um, some years ago, the Tilton Library, the director of the library, Sarah, did some Sugarloaf story collecting. And she shared that file with me because she heard that we were doing this. Most of her stories are all about people walking the mountain, walking the trails. And um, I have here just, just a couple short ones that I'll share with you. Um, and it says here uh, that I was brought up on the Chang Farm at the foot of Sugarloaf Mountain. And our Sunday excitement was going up to the top on the Indian Trail, as it was called, and hanging on to the trees and the bushes <laughs> as we climbed, since we thought they were our own. We got to the top, and I remember one Sunday, we um, climbed to sit on the ledge of rock that was facing Sunderland. We were told that the seat, or ledge, was used by Indians to watch the river below and all the activities of movement. And so that's one recollection, and I'll share one, one other. For many years, when I had an outside job, I now work at home, uh, the only time that I could take my, my walks, my daily walks up Sugarloaf was at 5.30 a.m. In the winter, this meant walking with a flashlight but it's a beautiful walk, even in the dark. I was never alone. There were always other regulars who liked to walk at that time. And then there was always the chance to encounter wildlife. In the early hours, deer, fox, bears, which made the, the walks rather exciting. Now I have more options about when to take my sugarloaf walks but occasionally, I'll go up before daylight with a flashlight, just like the old times. So those are two of the stories. And we want to hear your stories. We want to be a, a collection of storytelling, because that's what history is. And because we live in this place, even if you're new to it, like I've only come 30 years ago, even if you're new to the place, you have uh, special feelings for that um, or special recollections. Um, maybe you have school friends that grew up on the farms at the bottom of the, the mountain um, or something like that. Who wants to start? <laughs> you told me you remember the trolley. I must have been five years old or so, but I remember. About five years old. Do you, do you remember riding it or hearing it or seeing I it? I just remember getting on with my mother and going to Greenfield. Oh my gosh! To go, that's where we always went to, shopping. To take the to Wilsons. Oh, so, <laughs> so you would take it from Turnersville. Oh, from Turners, from Turners to Greenfield. Yeah, so originally <coughs> the trolley line was Greenfield to Turners Falls. Or and somewhere, I don't yes, know, but yes. I just remember as a child. Right, and then they added the the route to Deerfield and, and Northampton, which included stopping um, at, for Sugarloaf, mm -hmm. stopping at the... I the, remember my mother-in-law always saying she took the trolley from South Deerfield to Northampton. And that. Oh, nice, nice. Um, I wish there were trolleys. They, I mean, the only operating one right now is in Shelburne for the Trolley oh, Museum. Yeah. Yeah. But you can you can get glimpses of, of your memory. I grew up in Philadelphia, and we still had um, trolleys that would get us to, to school and to Valley Forge Park. So, um, so what else? Tell us tell us something. I else. remember the call of the the tracks in Turner's because I grew up in Turner's and cobblestone streets. Oh my goodness! In certain section. Yeah. Uh, on the main street. Um, I don't remember trolleys, but the tracks. But you remember the tracks the track being there. for a certain period yeah. of time. Yeah. And one of the um, the bridges that cross the um, the Green River, or is it the Deerfield River? There in, in Greenfield, from Greenfield to Deerfield, 
That's the Deerfield River. That's the Deerfield River. So there's the bridge there, and then there's the further bridge that's the railroad bridge. Um, and in between, when you're there, you can still see the, um, the sort of abutments where the trolley tracks were. So the supports for the trolley bridge are still in between those on the on the banks of the river. Anything about Sugarloaf? Um, when's the last time you were up on Sugarloaf? A long time ago. Yeah. A long time ago. Are you going to take the van? Yes, I am. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I, I have walked up several times, but many years ago. Oh, yes. Anyone else? My daughter was back. I know she could tell you a pretty harrowing story <laughs> when she comes back. Um, has anyone um, grown up at the base of it on a farm, on one of the farms down here, or well, worked one of those farms? I live at the base of the mountain, but I'm in Waitley. Oh, you're in, yeah, you're in Waitley. But, yeah, by the chain farm. Oh, uh, by the farm that was mentioned. Yeah, the next yeah the next place down yes oh my yes gosh, yeah. and before my house burned if you went up on top of the mountain you could actually see my two family home oh, you know because yes. it it would be above the tree line but oh. that that burned down so now I have a ranch so you can just see my you can see my barn if you really look you can see it because right where that curve of the river is oh mm. nice right yeah. so in this image you'll yeah. be able to see it from the yeah. top. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. That's yeah. a, that's I remember the night yeah. the hotel burned. What? Huh? Remember the night the hotel burned? You remember yeah. the hotel burned? I could burn. see it. From, we could see yeah. it from our kitchen window. Does anyone else remember that? I don't remember that, but my father-in-law was caretaker up there for a good number of years. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. well, now see, these are the kinds yeah. of stories. So, 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 what's your name? Sada Marianne Sadowski. Marianne yeah. Sadowski. So your father-in-law was the caretaker. Charlie was, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh my. And 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 your your name? Teresa Boren. Teresa. And and you remember? But I remember the night that it burned. <coughs> oh my. What year was that? Do you remember? Yeah, what year was that? Oh, Teresa. I have no idea. Huh? I no really idea? don't know. Yeah. But we could see it from our kitchen window. But you could yeah. see it. Oh my. I was I was coming back from Hadley from the hotel burn and I was on Stowe on uh, Southern Bridge and you could feel the heat from the fire down at Southern Bridge. Oh my! And I also know who set the fire that burned it. <laughs> oh! Okay. Do you want to give your name was away? You? <laughs> you could wait, I know. Was it you? It said, the state was going to tear it down because it was beyond repair. Right. And it was going to cost five thousand dollars to tear it down. So somebody did them a favor and went up there and set it on fire. Uh, so someone from the state probably <laughs> well the statute of limitations has passed. So, right. so, <laughs> so, 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 so but what's your name for sharing this story? Walter Sadowski. Walter Sadowski. Yeah, uh, one thing you you asked about a, a road. It mentions in the, in the flyer about a road up to the top of the mountain. Yes. Mountain Road is the road that used to go up top of the mountain. And the road that they use now was built during uh, Franklin Roosevelt's WPA. It was one of the WPA projects. Oh. But the other road was Mountain Road went around yeah. and went up the mountain the other way. Oh, wow. Too bad they didn't make the road wider. Yeah. yeah. Well, at wow. the time, they did widen it. It used to be narrower. Yes. It used really? to be, if there was a car coming, <laughs> there were places where you had to stop and let the other car come yeah. away. Oh, it's a lot wider now than it was. And back up. And I'm yeah. sure at the time, they were thinking people would be more walking or, or horse drawn yeah. carts yeah. or something like that. <laughs> I know images that you see of the, the hotel always show horse drawn, horse -drawn wagons delivering people there, not yeah. not motor cars. So, right. but the, the, it was so you could feel the heat down yeah, the, the southern bridge. The bridge. That's amazing. So, um, was that around Halloween? No, I don't no. remember what day it was. It was, it was, no, it was beyond, no. it was cold weather. Oh, yeah. Because the, the people that set the fire went up there on a ski mobile. Oh, uh, <laughs> Oh, boy, oh, wow. we're getting a lot of information here. <laughs> I think it was cold. Uh, <laughs> were you what? part of it? No. Oh, oh, no. no. <laughs> on the, on the trifle, <laughs> on the trifle, we did give you the, um, the website at UMass where there's a lot of history and images of the hotel. 
and and there's there's more than just the the one picture that that I showed. Yes. I don't know there there may be more information about <coughs> what they knew about the fire at the time and yeah. things like that. Snowmobiles, huh? <laughs> uh, one more thing, I noticed I noticed in that picture. Yes. Tobacco tents. You don't yes. see those anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't yeah. see them. Yeah. All the tobacco tenting over entire fields. Oh yeah, yes. they're, they're, if you turn the other way, they're all right. over, all over. Right. Tobacco yeah. tents everywhere you look. And you even the tobacco even tent. the tobacco barns are starting uh -huh. to even the barns are starting to disappear. The oh, tobacco yeah. barn yeah. sheds. I see. Yeah, yeah. Or sheds. Yes. Sheds. Sorry, it's a tobacco <laughs> shed. In the past couple of years, they've lost about a dozen in, in Sunderland. That's I think they took, took down three or four this yeah. year. I hope Maybe that more. they will, you know, choose to to preserve one for just the intrigue of how they worked with the, with the um, like louvers of ways to cool the tobacco and and things like yeah. that. And of course, mm -hmm. tobacco farming all all along that valley goes back to the native um, tribes, the Pecumtic, um the Algonquian tribes farm tobacco. There's, yeah. as, there's still yeah. a lot of tobacco, I call them barns, but you're saying that it's been upgraded to sheds? I guess what? they call them oh, sheds. They call them sheds now? Yes. Oh, sheds, okay. If, <laughs> if, you if you take that the back road going to Home Depot, Oh yes, okay. Where the the uh, university horse uh, farm is. Yes. Well, if you go along that road, you're going to see a good number of, of tobacco barns here. They have been refaced. Oh. So somebody has come in and, and removed the old boards and uh, put on new boards. Oh. They look very nice. There's a good number of them there. That's, that's very because they're using the barns. There's tobacco in them right now. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> but somebody's made use of the old wood, oh, I'm the sure. Old wood. I know yes. the old wood is used um, by distilleries. Um, distilleries um, and even uh, breweries. And of course we have lots of microbreweries and lots of, dis yeah. of micro distilleries to impart a tobacco flavor or the flavor of whatever wood was used um, in making their barrels. Mm. So, so maybe that's where those mm -hmm. those boards may have gone. May I interject here? Yes. Did you notice that they do one side a year on the barns? They don't do them both at the same time. All the barns had one side done, and then the next year they do the other side. I that I didn't. Well, I only see what I see right, driving the new along. Ones are because last year they did the opposite mm -hmm. side of all the barns, and then this year they did the other facing side. But they don't do the doors for some well, reason. Mm -hmm. They don't do the. <laughs> they don't take the wood from the doors. Well, it's just the side. You have to remember that uh, uh, the sunny side of the barn. The boards go to hell quicker because right. the sun drives <laughs> yeah. them off. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. yeah. So you you probably and do then, the sunny side first. And of course they have to they have to open them. Yeah, they have they, to they, louver yeah. and, and be movable. And I suppose if they're too dry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, they they open them up and dry them at the back. Yeah. They open all open up up during the day and close them at night. Yeah. yeah. Of course now they use gas to dry speed right. up the drying process. Uh -huh. Oh really? Now, getting getting back to the shade grown tobacco. The reason the tobacco was grown in the shade is because the, the leaves grow uh, finer for a, for a more expensive cigars. Broadleaf. If you're going and looking at cigars, the black cigars are the tobacco that's grown out in the field. The shade grown tobacco is the lighter colored. Is the lighter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there were a it's lot like of barn fires. It's like knowing your maple fires. syrups. <laughs> and then there were a lot of barn fires because the, uh, uh, I think it was Myers and Mendelssohn in Hatfield or in that area, mm -hmm. discovered that if you put tar paper all over all the barns, right, oh, and yeah. then they built a charcoal fire in there. And uh, the tobacco, when it was dried, tobacco dried, this was the shade goat tobacco, oh. they'd be almost green. Oh. And it would get a premium price for those. But yeah. a lot of the barns burned up because of it. Because yeah. it was a charcoal for heat. Right. And, 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 and tar paper and besides. I was going one time, I was going through Hatfield, and I looked and I could see this little whip, wisp of smoke coming up out of the tobacco <laughs> barn. So I stopped, and within three minutes, the barn was oh, oh, wow. like exploded. You know what I love about this, this, um, this whole train of thought and, and discussion that we're having all kicks off from a view right. that you see 
of the tenting, of the tobacco. And that, I think, is very evocative of how the, the stories connect to the pictures we see yeah. or, or the things that we're, we're seeing if we go on, on a field trip and we, we have a, a view, like the hotel and then you remembering the fire, mm -hmm. you know, having seen the fire and you remembering the fire. Um, any, um, anything about other farms that you might have seen from the, the top? I know this was a big pickle farming area. Um, but by the time I was here, it was after the, the pickles um, were such a, you know, a huge part of the business. Because we had, of course, the pickle, um, the pickling companies were Oxford. here. Yeah. Which, what were the companies? Oxford and then it, was, then it became Cane's. Jewett's oh, well, Jewett's yeah. Jewett. actually Jewett. is the, the right. family that um, yes. that builds the hotel. Yes. Right. They build the hotel and then they fund a lot of the work that goes on the mountain to create ta Table Rock and some of the other Ooh. formations and the picnic grounds um, right. are, are that same family that then uh, began the big pickling business in the area. Well, over where Yankee Can live now, there used to be Swan's Pickle Works. Oh. And Jewett's bought them out. Yeah. And mm. Swan with one N or two? Huh? Swan with one N or two Ns? I don't remember. Yeah, because I wonder because the Swan family was also big um, further up into the hill towns uh, for yeah, yeah. furniture yeah, making. I don't things. remember. I know, I know there, was, uh, there was an apartment building there that was Swan's block that we, when Yankee Candle bought it, bought it, they tore it down to enlarge your parking lot there. Right, yeah. It's um, we're we're living history all the time. I mean, we are living history because we are the the keepers and the sharers of the stories. But we're living history in that what we see was not what a generation ago saw anywhere. You know, and when you go back three and four generations it's hard to even recognize a landscape. Um, and that's why a, a point like this is so important because the river hasn't changed much in its, in its movement. And so we can go up and we can see that. However, when you look at the painting done in 1855, it looks like it was a much wider river channel than it is now. Oh, you'll notice there's no trees. Yes. Yeah. They used to make great use of trees back in those days. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. I, well, uh, well, this is, this is uh, uh, from Montague, though. But uh, uh, in Montague, uh, one of the old timers I used to, I went to talk to him all the time. And when I was young, he was, he was in his 90s, so he was around a long time before World War I. But uh, he said, you know, there were no trees in Montague. It was called the Montague Plains for a reason. Yeah. You could see for miles, and there were no trees. Yeah. And uh, if if when they needed firewood, they would take the father and the brothers and, and, a, and a wagon and stuff like that, and go up to Dry Hill, the other side of Route Route 63, right, and go up and talk to one of the guys and buy a tree. And they would and they would cut the tree down and cut it up, and throw it on a wagon, and take it home because anything they left overnight would be gone if they went back the next day. That's right. Because <laughs> wood was valuable back yeah. then. <laughs> yeah. well, and and well, not only that, every, he said everywhere you looked around, you would see sheep. Yeah. Because <laughs> well, the wool people industry, raised sheep for the wool. Well, you know? well yeah, but, well, <laughs> it, you can really track a lot of what you're talking about to the colonial settlement because uh, the colonial settlers did a lot of clear cutting Right. Um, they didn't <coughs> want trees near their homes because they thought trees made bad air. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, which you can understand, like if you walk through a heavy wooded forest and there's, there's leaf mold and mildews and that they, they associated that with what trees were doing, not, not understanding as we do that trees make. Air. We, 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 also yeah. because they came from England, which was what? already deforested. It was deforested. There was there were no trees in, in England, which was why, especially England, wanted the land here because they had <coughs> access to wood. They had access to trees, and there were very strict laws on what trees you you were allowed to use for your own um, use. 
and uh, size of trees um, and length of trees that had to be shipped to the king. Um, so a lot of that clear cutting um, comes from that time. And then the wool industry, that they bring sheep with them. Um, uh, again, they're uh, expected by <coughs> England to grow sheep for wool to be shipped back for for the, the wool industry um, in England. So, so you're, you know, the old timers that you were talking to are really seeing the end of this colonial um, lifestyle um, mm. that had been here, which is kind of interesting. You know? And there again, that's talking to, they, they saw a, a landscape that um, hadn't been there before settlement, you right. know, that, that had totally changed in just a few generations and has totally changed since then. Um, it's always interesting to look at old maps and you're trying to find your house, right? It's like, oh my goodness, you know, or, or go back. What, what's that saying? You can never go back home? Oh, mm -hmm. Thomas Wolfe. Yes. When, uh, when, when you try to go visit a place that you remember as a kid and you, the roads don't even go the same way, so you know, everything's rerouted. Um, so any, any, anything else that you can think of that just kicks off in memories? The trees, <laughs> the, the landscape seen from the top of the mountain, or the landscape seen from below. Like when do they first start lighting a tree up there? Does anyone know that? Does anyone remember? I don't know, but I know my brother-in-law used to, and others used to go up the Rotary Club. The, oh, is the Rotary Club? The Rotary was, Club would yeah. go up and, and light it every year. Yeah. So um, I've never seen it being erected. Is it? Does it come from the tower? Well, they're, they're way back when the hotel was there, they used to have a real tree that yeah. they used to decorate. But now, <laughs> they string lights off the frying, yeah. off of the flagpole, right. off yeah. the triangle. So that's, oh, there's no tree, tree up there. Yeah. It just lights <laughs> strung <laughs> out in a triangle. So <laughs> that's the same as what the, I what, I see I see the it, Kiwanis does it at the Kiwanis um, yeah. 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 <laughs> Or maybe, oh, really? club, yeah. or maybe yeah. a few of the, the, the um, uh, service clubs get together and do the one at Poet's Seat mm -hmm. as well. Um, so, yeah. so, so that, yeah, and that, of course, is again a, um, uh, you know, um, what do I want to see? A sort of an iconic thing on our landscape that you know the season because there's the tree lit, you know, on top yeah. of Sugarloaf. Um, have you ever taken um, someone visiting up Sugarloaf? up to see the view. I have. When yeah. when we were kids, my cousins would come from Waterbury, Connecticut. And they'd come during the summer, usually, and stay for like a week. But after church on Sundays, we would make sure that we got our trip up Sugarloaf Mountain so we could go into the gift shop <laughs> and buy the little um, cedar chest that said Mount Sugarloaf South Deerfield Mass. Oh my gosh, yes. um, <laughs> for, for, so, for your trinkets to keep your gumball jars uh, yes, and things in. Whatever, our little oh treasures. So, oh, yeah. so there was a gift shop and I yes. missed it? I know, I didn't know it was a This would have been in the 50s to 60s. Wow, the, in the 50s to 60s. And did we get your name? I'm Fran York. Fran York. Oh, that's, a, that's a fun because yeah. all of us remember yeah. those little cedar gifts, don't we? Yeah. Those souvenir cedar gifts that were that were everywhere. You got them, they said Mohawk Trail. Mm -hmm. You got them, they said, you know, the Liberty Bell. Wherever you were, you could buy those little cedar cedar gifts. I remember that. I remember the log cabins that you you put um, incense cones in. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, mm. um, so. Could, could you tell us more what the... Um, in those days, what the summit house looked like? It was, what was going on there? It was still the original house, obviously. Um, it was painted white, yeah. It was painted white, though. I can remember running on that porch and up and down the stairs. Oh, my gosh, I love this. <laughs> Being a kid, you know, like kids do. So, yeah. But it, it was pretty much looked like what the picture is, except it was white. But then inside, you went inside to a gift shop. Yeah, there was a gift shop inside. Mm -hmm. But it was sort of empty, otherwise, sort of the way the one on, on, on Mount, 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 Mount Holyoke is. Or, or, or yeah. is it Mount Holyoke or Mount Holyoke or both? Mount Holyoke. Well, look, this, the summit house that's still there on Mount Holyoke, you can go in, 
but it's it's kind of empty. There's no there's right. no I've been, staying there. There's no meals. There's nothing. I've been in that one, but um, was there kind of more happening? I don't remember. I just remember we had to go up there and we had to buy you had something. To show, you had to show your cousins or whatever. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, um, uh, I myself, uh, for, for years, have done teacher guiding with exchange students. And some years ago, uh, they, they come from Japan and it's connected to Amherst College um, because they have a, like a sister city thing with Amherst and a sister college thing. Um, and one of the programs that we were scheduled to do at the last minute fell through. And I thought, what am I going to do with these 50 students from Japan on short notice? And I thought, I'll take them to Sugarloaf. So we go for a hike on Sugarloaf, which was lovely, it was beautiful. They got very tired and they were surprised the old lady myself could keep up with them. Um, one of the girls actually <coughs> fell and got terribly scarred up her knee, her arm, her face. And we got around that by telling her that she's, she's like a superhero and everyone's going to be jealous because she's got these souvenirs uh. to take home. <laughs> so they took pictures up there. And of course, everyone's talking, 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 talk, and they're taking pictures, and they're just loving the beauty of this place. The pictures ended up in an international magazine on Asian, Asian studies and no. studying abroad. And now every single year, <laughs> it's go. demanded by these schools that send the students that they get to go to Sugar Oh, really? <laughs> so it was. So, so I think that that's a kind of wonderful mm -hmm. experience that they. This. You do know it's it's a, an important pinpoint for um, air navigation. That, no, tell us about that. Yeah, that, that pilots um, when they're when they're flying um, at night, they still use the the lights that are up there as knowing when they have to turn. And in storms, um, they can look down and they know sugar loaf um, because it's such a uh, a an important landscape device. I mean, we've got plains and river valley and nothing going up the river for quite a long time and then boom, there's this this mountain. You know, mountain. And uh, But I didn't I, realize I there was a light up but there. But there's no lights up there's there. There's lights up there in the winter which was really important because in some storms, um, small planes have had to use it because of the tree. You the need lights there now, at night? No, no, no. not Oh, not way now. back. Oh, way oh, back. Here today. Oh. And, and way back. But oh. today, still in, in winter, the lights that are used. But that they, even in daytime, <coughs> that that mountain, that formation, oh. Oh, is, okay. is where they know yeah, that they have to yeah. turn for certain um, uh, Roots. Air roots, roots. Yeah. that are used. I don't so. see any lights there. And right I, right. I actually was told that by um, by a retired pilot. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, we live at the base of it, and often don't even think to go up there. You have you have company. Where are you take him? You gotta take him to Yankee, right? <laughs> Maybe go see other <coughs> flowers, and you forget what's right in your backyard yeah. that can have such a profound effect on someone who's never seen it, like the the Japanese students that are like, oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, and Riva, talking about lights on the mountain, you're making me think of a stray fact that I know, yeah. is that also um, the distance to Mount Holyoke, that the Holyoke range, this is about the distance that uh, the human eye can see light at. So I'm thinking of the time when the when Native Americans were here that a, a big fire being lit on the top of this mountain could be seen at Mount Holyoke and vice versa. So we <coughs> so the take single, ourselves single way fire. back long ago on a clear night. That's that's about about the distance um, that the eye can see. So they could communicate communicate really across our very valley. You know, our, the, our valley is from here to there. And it's actually uh, with human sight and, and uh, with fire that, that that could be done. 
And the I other thing about that distance between here and there is that's also about the distance that um, a hunter who, who would have, with a bow and arrow, hit a, a deer. And so we hit a deer, but the deer is then wounded and runs. And so the hunter runs after it all day long and, until the um, wounded animal staggers and falls. And that's also just about that distance. Oh, from that there to be wounded to, to death. That's yeah. how far. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so this, whole comp, this area called Compta was um, traversed by the people who lived here. They, they, mm -hmm. they worked up and down and around, and then all the way down to Springfield a lot. But it's a sort of a neat package just between this mountain and, and that mountain mm -hmm. that we have for many, many reasons. Yeah. I, I do like, and, and if you remember from our very first talk where we talked about the geology of the valley and how the valley formed and things like that, um, one of the things that I love is when you um, meet somebody who's maybe from the West Coast or, or some, somewhere else and they're like, mountain, that's not a mountain, what do you, you know, you call, the, you call those hills over there a mountain range? And, and they can be very condescending about it. It's always nice to remind them, yes, these are some of the oldest mountains on the planet. <laughs> and our mountains look like that because they're, they're the senior mountains to the Alps. But once they look like the Alps because these really are some of the oldest on the planet. Hmm. That's... that's Nice to kind of be able to come back with when they start sneering at our little mountains. <laughs> um, I don't know. How are we doing? Do you have to tell us something about Mount, Mount Sugarloaf? Me? Yes. <laughs> you have done some things up there. I have. More I recently. Have some things up there. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I'm Piper. Uh, <laughs> you remember Piper I'm her, was her our techie. <laughs> but she was also our techie putting yes. the things together. <laughs> Um, let's see. Uh, I, I do know I do know the native story. Oh yeah, we told we told we told we told we but but um, have have there been any special events on, on the mountain that you can think of? Um well they are have been weddings up there. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I played I, I played the I played the harp professionally <laughs> and um, I played <laughs> the wedding up there and it was fantastic. Yeah. And so it's so, and it's wonderful, wonderful setting yeah. up there. Yeah, have you ever gone to a special event held on the mountain like that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I wish that could have, when I heard about it afterwards, it was, that must have been beautiful, mm -hmm. to have a wedding on those picnic mm -hmm. grounds and have the pictures taken with that backdrop, yeah. you know, behind the wedding party and things like that. So, well, we're we're pretty good if there's, a, if there's anything else that, oh, good, good. I can remember my mother saying that there was a dance pavilion at the yeah, base I of thought the there mountain. Was yeah. Too. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to ask you about that. A dance pavilion, yes, because one time um, for PVMA in the archives, I was uh, sorting antique postcards um, for the cur curator, and there were pictures of people being delivered in old stagecoaches to the dance pavilion and it was during the time when they were doing the pageants the historic pageants and they uh, have reenactors dress like uh, colonial people and native people years ago. yeah yeah so this is uh, like a hundred years ago but they they had like an old stagecoach delivering people to the dance Yes. Would that be up on the mountain or at the foot of the mountain? It was at the foot of the mountain. Yeah. But about, about, about where the intersection is. Uh, where oh, yeah. The okay. And then we, we have photos oh, good. that um, Turn the cameras. during, during um, the Roosevelt administration, when it was the Civilian Conservation Corps, the, the young local men who built the road, the new road up the mountain, and that that was then used as their barracks. Yeah, and what and what John was just saying is he thinks the dance pavilion was possibly washed out by the hurricane of '38. Mm -hmm. uh, my father-in-law and brother-in-law took part of the pavilion, and it was the th floor they were building the Fair Street Market, and yes. the wood from there is in the they used it in the store. 
Yes, oh. I, hear, I heard in that which story store? too. Mm -hmm. in, in which store? It was, well, it was at Thayer Street Market, which is now the deli on oh, Thayer oh, Street. Oh, the, um, the, the, the BBA. The BBA. The BBA. BBA. The 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 The BBA. The BBA. The BBA. On their floor, right? and they they oh. and they had to do it quickly. They had to get it out of there. That's the story my husband told me. Yeah. And they used it in, in the store, and especially the, the floor it is uh, what used to be the dance pavilion. Oh, wow! I love that. Wow. See, see now, now we have we have more that than we can pass on those stories to people. Yeah. Have you been to the BBA? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. yes. Right. Because oh, oh yeah, so it's wonderful. That's. Cool. But they're not the ones who did it, it was the previous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, my. Did King Philip used to hide underneath the lookout? Oh, you know, that's <coughs> now, if you're talking about the, the lookout that... That's jots out. Okay, the table rock was added on, if you're talking about that part. That's added on in the 1860s. Oh. So, they say he used to hide out and watch people coming up the river. Yeah, they talk. They talk a lot about the the mountain being used as as a um, an outlook, which it was used as an outlook by native tribes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there's if um, when we talked about King Philip's War, we talked about the fact that many of the refugees of the attacks that had happened in the east. Those, those refugee Indians had moved to the area around Sugarloaf and most likely then were able to watch the soldiers who were bringing the grain yeah. from Deerfield and come down to, to attack them. But there's not a, enough historical evidence to show that King Philip actually ever stayed there. Yeah. We do know that he tra traversed the area that the there there um, has been a lot of um, study of um, documents and oral histories and things like that about where he is at different points that show he traversed um, up the valley. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, nothing nothing to say. That was a story that. We yeah, and and that's but that's great <coughs> because we need to share those stories too so that we can say well you know I've heard this and I've heard that. Um, and more knowledge gets out about King Philip's War because yeah. because of those kinds of talk. And part of that is due what what you're talking about is due to this big um, push in the 1860s to make it a tourist destination. And that's when you start. The, there's a real push to call a South Sugarloaf King Philip's Seat or or the Mossy Skull and things like that. Um, you know, as part of that. Why is it called Sugarloaf? Oh, why is it called? Well, because it looked to the English. The native people named their land, uh, their landscape um, for things in nature, and the English people named their landscape for for what it looked like to them that they might use every day. And, and a sugar loaf is actually it's a um, begins as a cone of brown sugar. Um, which is grated to get the sugar out to put in your tea mm -hmm. um, or into your baking. And so once it gets grated down, it's going to have that kind of lumpy form. Oh, okay. Somebody <laughs> asked me that. Yeah, like a they little They said, why is it called sugarloaf? I said, I really don't yeah. know. And, and interestingly, there are sugarloaf mountains around the world. Um, oh, really? So, so the, yeah. the term is used in many other uh, landscapes. Um, and of course, if it's if it's sugarloaf, then it's probably named by English, you know, or it's a, a, a translation. There's um, a ski resort named sugarloaf. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know what state it's in now. Maine, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont. Maine, I think. Maine. Maine. I think it's Maine. Yeah. Um, anything else? I have to finish with one very short story. Um, I don't know how many of you knew Ed Wells. Um, he uh, was a science teacher at the Men, and he used to go out to um, do school programs with me um, after he had retired. He was in his 70s, and he would go in, and the idea was that students could talk to him about his experiences during World War II or during the Great Depression, because he had memories of both those times. So it was a chance for them to interview someone and kind of connect generations. 
And one of the stories he told, it was just a really short introduction, but it stayed with me. He said when he was a little boy, and he would go to the 4th of July parade, there were old men that marched in the 4th of July parade, <laughs> and they were Civil War soldiers. Wow. Wow. They, were the, they had been mm -hmm. veterans of the Civil oh, wow. War. And he said, now he's one of those old men that marches <laughs> in your parade, and he's a veteran of World War II. And when he was a little boy, he would sit on his grandfather's knee, and his grandfather would tell him stories of his father living in Quincy, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And his father was living in Quincy, Massachusetts when John Quincy Adams was living in Quincy, Massachusetts. Wow. And of course, John Quincy Adams stood and held his mother's hand to watch Bumper Hill. Mm -hmm. So when you listen to me, he was telling the students, oh. you touch the revolution. Amazing. Because that's what our stories do. They connect us. Yeah. So I want to thank you, thank you. for taking thank me you. on a time travel journey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much.